All right, well, this is part hmm, two, three, whatever on this column. So, got the column apart, as you can see. Turns out it is quite easy to pull apart. I just needed a little bit of help from a friend to tell me what I was fighting wasn't as complicated as I thought. So, this sleeve piece, which is the upper part of the column, unlike the eye did it, where it has a piece welded inside and it's held in with screws, and this is that piece I was saying is rolled over at the top, so it sits like this. This actually just slips on to this piece here. Yeah, I think it slips onto this. There's the little keyed piece, that right there. That notch mates up with that notch. And it's just kind of a press fit. So literally all I did to get it apart was just kind of pop it with the butt of my hand back and forth and work my way around it until it knocked loose and then it could just kind of wiggle its way off. All right, so once you get that collar off, then you can easily pull this out. Now for whatever reason, these pins didn't want to release. I tried with a pick, I tried with the tool, I can see the clip inside of them. And the clip is on top where this gap is here. But I plan on doing a Deutsch connector anyway, so I just said screw it, I'm not gonna depin them and fight it, I'm just gonna cut them. So I left enough slack here I could technically splice these back together if I ever needed to. I'll keep that connector just in case. But there was plenty of slack on this. It's quite, quite long actually, but I'll end up putting a Deutsch connector on it. What is it, uh, it's an eight pin connector? Perfect. So they have an eight pin Deutsch connector. Works out. So I'll put an eight pin on that whenever I get it back together. So anyways, what you wanna do is, obviously you take the nut off, sleeve off, this piece off, got a little spring. Unlike the I did it where it's got a, a ring clip that keeps the spring under tension, you literally press the steering wheel adapter down with the spacer on this, and this nut actually compresses it the rest of the way down. So it's easier to take apart as far as that goes. This spring is a little bit different from the I did it. There's no guide rod in it, and it's a big ass flathead. So I was using this flathead here, and you can see the size difference. It wanted to kind of rock. So you might want to get a really wide flathead if possible, or get some kind of keyed piece that would fit in that to kind of stabilize it so it doesn't want to rock or wobble but anyways you just it works the same way it's got the little cam lugs on it you just push it in turn it and it pops out and it comes out through the uh through this hole right here see the little cam lugs because this will be sitting like this to get this off now mine was a little bit tricky this piece here is sleeved is on here and these little pins right here that hold this on through these holes right here. This sleeve actually covered them up on one side. And you can see where I kind of dinged it up because I was trying to flex it, like bend it over so I can get it. The one side came out no problem. The other side wanted to fight with me. So putting it back together might be kind of a task. We'll see. But anyways, you pop these pins out same way as the I did it. You take a, I think it's an eight thirty second screw. This one's pretty beat up. It's well seasoned, but you just thread it into the, the hole you can either rig up a little small slide hammer, do like I did, and take a pair of vice grips. And your good old persuader. So you knock that out. Then this piece comes off. Then you're left with this piece, which will be here. And remember to release that, you have these teeth that do the tilt mechanism. You'll probably have to take the arm here and unhook it to pull this loose. Once you get that loose, it's just Allen bolts on this one. And these were, they're like thread sealant. They weren't red thread locker like the, I did it. These came out a whole lot easier. The, they dug it out just the same, but they're just, they weren't super tight like the other ones were like glued in as hard. Pop those four bolts loose and this just like slides off, done. So you got that off. You're left with this piece and Obviously this comes out once you pull this mechanism out, then you can slip this column out. You do have this little 
crush washer. I would no, not really crush washer. I guess it's like an outer bearing race, really, because this nut tightens down against this and preloads this front bearing here. So when you reassemble it, don't torque it all the way down. Rotate the column and feel. When you start to get resistance, stop. That's why you want to make sure this does have some thread locker on it because you're not torquing it down like the I did it says. So anyways, you're left with this sleeve, which is on here like that. And you have this piece. Now this piece is way different from the I did it. So this is a big ass like piece of steel stock welded onto some tubing. And this just slides into the end here. Now this is your end, end column support. And it just slips in like that. Now this tube up here, this here, is actually held in. It has this piece in there, which is your piece that these four Allen head bolts screw into. You have this little ring clip, and you have this little uh, washer deal. So you have to pop that off, you have to pop this out. That is, let me slide this back up here too. That ring clip goes into these little grooves here. You'll be able to see it. You just pop it off with a pair of uh, needle nose or something or a flathead. So you take that out. Now what I, it took me a second to figure out what it was. I was thinking this little notch here, this groove, had like a little spring clip that you had to push down to disassemble it. It's not the case. So this has this little tab right here in the middle. That prevents this from going in anymore and it sits in this little cutout. So it slips on and it kind of locks in like that. You can rotate it back and forth. And these holes here, like this one right here, that there, there's one up there in this little slot here. That's actually what this sits in. But anyways, to get this off, you know, this, this tube here is slid up through here. I actually took, and that tube actually is kind of pressed through this, uh, this face here. It's like pressed into this and you see that groove there. That groove is actually what locks into here. What you end up having to do is taking a large punch or something similar. I did with this big old mamma jamma here. And I just put it on the edge. Actually, before I did that, I took the rubber mallet and just smacked on the end of this to drive it down until it was flush. Because you can only make it flush with this. You can't really get a bite on it after that. So after that, I took the punch and just put it on the lip inside of here and just tapped on it to, to push it out. Like I said, it's just a, a light press fit of this into here. Now what you might want to do is have someone hold the bottom of this that's on this end from shooting out because whenever you're tapping it, eventually it will let go. It's going to want to shoot out. Luckily, I was tapping real gently and I didn't sling it across the shop. But like I said, have someone hold it or maybe put some tape on it or wrap something, put something behind it to catch it, whatever. So once that's loose, this just slips out the bottom. This slides right off the top and that's it. It's disassembled. Uh, the wiring on this blinker assembly is a little bit more sl snug fit in the eye did it because it feeds this little tight gap and then it runs along this tube and this tube is pretty wide inside of this. So it, this actually protects that wiring from the steering shaft, but it also makes it a whole lot tighter clearance in here. So you don't have as much room to work with. So the next step I'm gonna have to figure out is how to get my length right for me to start cutting this, cutting this, cutting this, and welding it all up to this E-Pass system. Now, I went over a little bit before how this works. Well, obviously we're gonna cut this back to a certain amount. This will slip on like so. This end here will have to get cut back because this piece, which is the bottom of that column that used to mate to this E-Pass motor, this will slip inside of here. Now this is a two inch to inch and a half exhaust reducer. And right now it is like barely not fitting. So what you'll end up doing is pretty much running a bandsaw or something, cutting it down right here where it starts to taper down. Once we have that, we'll slowly work our way back, taking a little bit of material at a time until this is kind of a press fit into here. And it'll, we'll get it to where it'll slip all the way down. And then you want to bring it out just a little bit because you still have to get bolts into these holes. So you don't want to be jammed up against it or you won't be able to turn the bolts. 
So you'll push it in and then bring it back a little bit, make sure you can get bolts in and out. And then you'll weld this to that, you'll weld this to that. Now in the video that Follow the Build did, he drilled a hole, I think, through this and through the column and plug welded. I will probably run a bead all the way around it, the tube, or I'll just put like triangulated. I'll put bead, bead, and then bead on the other side, just a little like half inch. Probably do the same thing with this. I might do a full weld on this one since it'll, it doesn't have as much sleeve material to stabilize it. It's just gonna be, you know, this little bit to this little flange lip. So what I'll end up doing, like I said, I'll cut that. I'll probably use this deburr tool. One of these, whirly bird, whatever you wanna call it. And I'll ream around the inside of it because it's this is a carbide burr. This will shave material off. And I'll just keep shaving material off of this until this slips in. But like I said, I need to figure out my measurements first before I go cutting. As the saying goes, measure twice, cut once, realize you made a mistake and you should have measured three times. Yeah, it's something like that. But anyways, so I have to cut this down, obviously. I'll have to cut this column down. Uh, I'm, what I might do is cut this weld. I don't know how far the shaft actually feeds in. I might uh, put a rod down this hole to see how far it actually feeds into it. Because I might just cut this weld and use just this inner shaft piece. I have to cut this somewhere around here, like at this section or this section, and you have to drill that out so that it fits this rod. I'll have to weld those. And then the fun part is figuring out how to reassemble this piece with it cut. So whenever that comes time, I might just do away. I don't actually know if I can do away with this upper piece or with this inner tube. You might actually have to have this section to hold you know, this mechanism and this piece and this all together. But if, if I do get rid of it, what I'll end up doing is just cutting it off at the base down here and I'll drill through the bottom. Actually, no, I won't be able to use this. I won't use this at all because this, this will be at the bottom and it'll be going to that instead of feeding the shaft through. So this probably won't get used ever again unless I need this top section for something, which like I said, I don't know how I'll actually use that unless I just need to press it back into this and cut it off. So, I don't know, play it by ear, we'll see what, how it goes. I'm, I'll, it's probably what I'll have to do is cut this top section off and use just this piece up top here so I can reassemble this to this and be able to screw this in. So yeah, that's it. Um, another cool thing I picked up, you know, I went over to this alignment tool that I bought I found this on eBay. That is the part number there. I don't know who actually makes it, but it comes with some fancy old school instructions on how to use it, but it's a fairly simple tool. It just hooks onto the upper control arm and you just put a breaker bar on it and twist it. That way you can loosen the bolts just slightly and the breaker ball can get, bar will give you leverage to adjust your upper control arm without it just like swinging and slinging way out of adjustment from what you had. That way you can do it in small increments. If anyone has a Mustang 2 front end, like Rod and Customs, there's a couple other companies that make the original Mustang 2, which this is what I didn't know. I made the video talking about how this, I thought this was a, a bad design. This is actually the original Mustang 2 design with the slots up here. If anyone else has this setup and you need a tool like this, let me know. I thought about actually starting to, uh, oh, I guess I can't really start to make it because I'm sure this is a patented tool, but I, if someone needs this, I can make one and you just pay me for the, the material and you know the whatever it, short time it takes me to weld this up and the shipping and I'll get you a, a tool made if you need me to. But obviously I can't go and sell them because I'm sure it's patented if it even still hold a patent. But anyways, so yeah, that's it. I'll, uh, I'll make another video whenever I have this more done, closer to being assembled. I did pick up a Roller 302 that I've yet to completely disassemble, but it's a standard bore. It has a little bit of pitting on, go figure, the same cylinder mine is. So the back eight, cylinder number eight has a little bit of pitting at the top. Since it is standard bore, I'm hoping they can bore it out 
or it's not enough pitting or it's high enough in the cylinder that it's not gonna matter, but I'm gonna end up tearing that down and taking it to the machine shop and we'll have a backup motor for this thing. Uh, another thing to note for the people that are watching this that are subbed to me because of the sniper stuff and the tuning, I tried to make a video yesterday. Well, I did actually make it. I ended up deleting it because it was 30 minutes long of me bouncing all over the place instead of focusing on one topic. Uh, I rambled about stuff. I had to stop and research a couple things because I didn't want to be leading the wrong direction or speaking in, not invalid, improper, but uh, pretty much telling you stuff that wasn't true or was untrue because I wasn't sure yet. I needed to find out. Turns out I was wrong, so I would have been guiding you wrong. But I'm going to redo that video, so I deleted that one. But I also had some technical difficulties in making it. I had to stop and fix things. Uh, it wasn't sniper related. It was with the car. The starter didn't want to turn over. I thought I had a breaker issue. I don't know what it ended up being, uh, but my starter was clicking at me. It could be my ignition switch that I had a problem with once before that was screwy. But anyways, that's it for this video. And uh, like I said, I'll come back with another sniper video soon or tuning video. And I'll follow up with this one after I make some progress with it. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Later.